render target node editor is the heart of Octane for lightweight render settings. Inside its root node, you can link the nodes that configure the scene settings, the camera, the environment, the imager, the kernel, the post-processing and the render passes nodes. In this editor, user also can configure the plugin render settings like instancing or surface override. To better understand the importance of render target, let's load some objects. I'm going to use two objects I have in my library, a ground object and a Paulian. And now let's switch to Octane. You can see here that no config file can be opened by Octane. This means we didn't define any default render target we can use each time we switch to Octane. If we start the high PR now, we can see how the render used, the kernel used is direct lighting by default. And a simple occlusion is used as a GI. We also have a white background, uh, predefined color correction, a certain amount of depth of field, and so on. So let's open the render target node editor so we can customize all you know, those render attributes. We can now look for the Octane render target submenu and start adding all the nodes we need. So I'm going to add the camera thin lens and connect it to camera. Then the environment texture because I I'll attach an HDRI probe to, to this node. Then the imager, camera, a kernel. Let's start with dark lighting. Then the post processing camera here. I'm not attaching the render passes for now. We will talk about it later in some other video. So let's start talking about kernels. Kernels are rendering algorithms we can choose to render our image. There are four different kernels we can choose from. Some are biased, other are unbiased. Uh, direct lighting is a biased kernel, so it's very good for some quick preview of our animations and renders. The other kernels are info channel, that let us export some special buffers uh, as a render in the render. Then we have the path tracing and the PMC that stands for Population Monte Carlo. Those two are both unbiased and they should be used for the final render to, to get maximum quality. So I'm going to get rid of those two and I'm also going to open the light panel and change the light type to octane light so we can have an octane light in the scene. I'm going to reload the scene. Okay, so now we have an area light, an octane area light lighting the scene in the backdrop. The light power is really too high. I'm going to set it to one. Maybe one it's not enough. Four or eight. Okay. Something else I'm going to do is to open the environment texture at, for the moment, set the power to zero. So we only have the, the light lighting the scene. Now let's open the kernel, the dark lighting kernel, and let's take a look at the options. At the moment we have the global illumination type set to ambient occlusion, but if we want to use uh, Monte Carlo to calculate G high, we need to select diffuse. Of course this is going to be a little slower than ambient occlusion, but 
uh, with direct lighting, radiosity is still really fast. We can take a look at the different uh, settings, um, the relative effect on the GI lighting, just opening this requester and if we set it to known, well, we only have ray tracing, no radiosity at all. Then we have ambient, but you can see there is no uh, ambient at the moment because the environment has been set uh, to zero, the environment power. And same for sample ambient. Ambient occlusion is going to work, but we don't notice a lot of differences uh, with uh, you know the diffuse. We only can see there is a big difference uh, because uh, of the bouncing GI rays. We can also increase the diffuse, specular, and glossy depth rays. I normally set them to eight, and those are the, the settings I normally use as a preview render. Now I'm going to add a probe image to light the scene. So we can open Octane Textures and open Octane Texture Image here, and from the panel load an image. I have a cool collection of HDRIs. Uh, I'm going to load, let's see, this one. I'm going to set the gamma to 1 because this should be done with real HDRIs. When working with Octane we should also be sure that our color space options are all set on linear. Okay, because Octane uses is its own uh, color space options defined in the Imager camera node. So let's attach this texture to the environment texture and reset the power to one. So now we have this HDRI lighting the scene. Let's order the node editor a little bit. And now if we want to make this configuration, the default configuration, each time we activate the, the render, the Octane render, well, all we have to do is to use save as default. So now this is our default configuration. And if we want, we can also save a preset using the add preset option. Now if we open the preset shelf, we will see under the workspace, we have a new preset called test. But we can change the name to, our, to something like Octane Direct. So we know we're using the direct lighting in it. This is a great way to store a library of different presets we can recall easily just clicking, double clicking on, on the icon. Of course, all those nodes uh, have its own options we can change, just clicking, double clicking on it. Uh, even the render target itself has a number of options. We're not going to, to go through those in this video but we'll be exploring them in some other video when needed. The Octane for Lightwave Online Docs covers all those options uh, very well, so my advice is to consider it always a great resource. Anytime you may have some doubt about some options in Octane Render for Lightwave or you just want to know more about it. Thanks for watching.